Nestle is among the world's most significant beverage, food, and snack businesses. Presently, it owns more than 2,000 brands, employs about 340,000 people, and trades in over 180 countries. Nestle was formed in 1905 as a result of the merger of two companies, the Anglo-Swiss Milk Company, established in 1866 by brothers George and Charles Page, and Fernie Lecti Henry Nestle, founded in 1867 by Henry Nestle. In the beginning, the Nestle Group was only a milk company, specialized in baby formula and condensed dairy products, and has since evolved to be one of the world's most giant food corporation, and the undisputed leader in its industry in terms of productivity, revenue, but also for the number of scandals and controversies that hit the company over the course of the years. In the 1970s, declining breastfeeding percentages led several businesses to raise concern over the marketing practices of breast milk substitute manufacturers, particularly Nestle. It all started in 1973 when the new Internationalist released an indictment on Nestle marketing tactics called Babies Mean Business, which revealed how it hooked third world women on infant formula. However, the following year, a pamphlet produced by London's War on Want group, The Infant Killer, brought the baby formula business to light. As a result, the Infant Formula Action Coalition launched a boycott in Minneapolis that soon spread to Australia, Canada, and Europe. In 1984, Nestle met with the boycott organizers and agreed to implement the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes, which banned the promotion of breast milk substitutes. The boycott was officially suspended, but that didn't last long since, in 1988, the International Baby Foods Action Network alleged that health facilities in the developing world were receiving free and low-cost supplies from formula companies. So the boycott was relaunched the following year. Nowadays, Nestle has finally conceded that exclusive breastfeeding for zero to six months is the best for infant nutrition, but they are still marketing their six-plus-month formula. On top of that, a 2017 Nestle report found that 107 instances of non-compliance with its baby milk marketing policy and a 2019 report stated that Nestle was still comparing its own products with human milk. One of Nestle's biggest businesses is its bottled water, with almost 8 billion CHF in total sales in 2019 alone. But as we're used to seeing from the Swiss giant, this didn't come without any expense. Nestle is the biggest group in terms of sales, owning almost 50 brands including Perrier, San Pellegrino, and Poland Spring, just to name a few. To be able to dominate this highly controversial industry, Nestle promised to bring jobs and new infrastructures to economically depressed areas in exchange for tax breaks and access to water. While this huge approach can look beneficial at first sight, it can have huge environmental impacts like the latest California drought. In this case, Nestle took millions of gallons of water from California Creek Network for a U.S. water brand leading the U.S. Forest Service to state the current water extraction is drying up surface water resources. In addition, Nestle has been involved in court cases in Maine, Michigan, Florida, and Canada, where the Council of Canadians and Indigenous Rights Organization Lakota People's Law Project is boycotting Nestle for extracting water from watersheds that have seen droughts in recent years. Famous is an interview from Nestle's CEO Peter Brabeck Lamath who in 2005 shared his controversial opinion on the right of free water. Also, Wasser is natürlich das wichtigste Rohmaterial, das wir heute noch auf der Welt haben. Es geht darum, ob wir das normale Wasserversorgung der Bevölkerung privatisieren oder nicht. Und da gibt es zwei verschiedene Anschauungen. Die eine Anschauung, extrem würde ich sagen, wird von einigen von den NGOs vertreten die darauf pochen, dass Wasser zu einem äh, äh, öffentlichen Recht erklärt wird. After some controversial marketing tactics that endangered thousands of newborns and after causing drought in huge areas of the US and Canada, Nestle has also been involved in a child labor scandal. The Ivory Coast is the world's largest producer of cacao and problems related to the use of children younger than 15 working at cacao farms already emerging at the beginning of the 2000s. In 2015, Nestle, after it promised to end the use of child labor, 
commissioned the Fair Labor Association to visit the farms used by the company. At the end of their research, the FLA found various workers under the age of 15, proving that even after all the efforts of the Swiss giant, child labor in the Ivory Coast was still present. Recently, another case caught the attention of the public eye, when six African men alleged that they were trafficked from Malai and forced to work on the cacao farms of Nestle and Cargill in the Ivory Coast. It's the first time that a class action of this kind has been filed against the cacao industry in a U.S. court. The plaintiffs brought the case forward under the Alien Tort Statute, which allows for foreign nationals to sue in U.S. courts for human rights abuses committed abroad. Even though a lower court decision allowed the lawsuit, the Supreme Court ruled 8-1 that the group had no standing because the plaintiffs did not show that any of the relevant conduct took place within the United States. Now you might be asking, in today's world where people are always looking at the origins and the production methods of what they consume, how is it possible that Nestle is still alive? Well, one of the reasons is surely the huge size that Nestle has today which allows the company to fight scandals like the ones we analyzed before and to keep clean the name of the brand, but also important improvements have been done in their practices. For example, all the cacao for its UK chocolate is Rainforest Alliance certified and it was the first chocolate company to introduce a child labor monitoring and remediation system, or CLMRS, to tackle child labor. In 2020, Nestle also announced that it will leave the Canadian bottled water market. This is a significant win for communities across Canada that have been fighting for years to end the pumping of groundwater. To sum up, we can think of Nestle as a classic case of perception versus reality, pollution and exploitation behind a polished image and even though it looks like they're marketing a solid effort to abolish their old practices, the road to a better and more socially responsible company seems still long and winding.